What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm really, really excited for today because we are setting up a very big upgrade in terms of brewing uh, hardware here. This is a Buckeye Hydro RO system, reverse osmosis system. For the first time on the channel, I'm gonna have a consistent and pretty much perfect brewing water base coming into my brews for uh, the rest of the time that I'm down here. So I'm really excited to get this started. This is a totally unsponsored video. I bought this system with my own money um, and there is no real interaction professionally back and forth between Buckeye Hydro and myself. I purchased the system mainly because I needed a consistent, reliable water source. It's been a while since I talked about water on this channel, but uh, for the most part, when you see me brewing in my videos, I'm using spring water now. Um, I used to use distilled water for a while. I'd go out to the store, I'd buy eight or so gallons of distilled water at like three bucks, four bucks a gallon. Um, not exactly a cheap way to do things, but it's a perfect brewing base. Uh, and then I gradually migrated over to spring water and I tried to find the most uh, relatively neutral and clean and soft spring water I could, which was typically Poland Spring. I brewed with spring water for a long time and it th I think it has made some fantastic brews. Problem is, I have to go out and actually buy it. I have to think ahead, plan ahead, get everything all set up and really just be ready to go um, before brew day pretty much every single time. I'm so busy now that really oftentimes I'm only brewing because I can find like five or six hours in my schedule that I can carve out and actually have uninterrupted or uncommitted and that's when I brew. So driving to the store, getting water, getting all that stuff figured out prior to the brew day is becoming a massive pain in the butt. I also realized that when I say spring water, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, for us here in the United States, our spring water can be relatively soft, easy, and cheap to find, but potentially in Europe, spring water could mean mineral water. It could mean something that's got three, four, five hundred parts per million of bicarbonate in it or something crazy like that. So not all spring water is made the same, and I realize that's kind of been a sticking point for a lot of viewers. They don't like the spring water thing. I understand that, so today we're gonna solve that once and for all. In this video moving forward, we're gonna start talking in terms of RO water as a base instead of spring water, instead of distilled water, um, and I think that's gonna be a good solution for everybody across the globe. So let's hope it works out that way. So first of all, RO water, it's not distilled water. Um, it's very, very close though. So RO water has pretty much all of the solids, all of the minerals in it removed, except for trace amounts. There should be maybe one to three parts per million of each individual in a mineral, which is practically zero from a brewing perspective. So Buckeye Hydro came to me through some random internet research for the most part. It seems to be a relatively popular choice when it comes to picking a homebrew scale RO system. They have many different capacities, many different flow rates, um, and many different uh, scales options for the RO systems out there. This system here is a 100 gallons per day system, which means that it should, on paper, depending on the uh, amount of solids in the input water, it should be pumping out roughly about four gallons of RO water per hour, um, which is perfect because two hours prior to my brew day, all I have to do is set the system up, turn it on, put a float valve in my kettle, and we should be good to go. Of course, this will all change depending on the input water, but it should be relatively simple. So if I'm spending about 25 bucks buying water for every brew, this system should really pay for itself in less than 10 brews. So I consider that a worthwhile investment and we're gonna go through how to set it up today and what it will do. In the system, basically there's a series of filters that the water is slowly pushed through and these filters remove different chemicals. I also went ahead and purchased a chloramine module in here as well. I don't actually know for a fact if chloramine is present in the city water here in Boston area. It might be, um, but I'd rather not take any chances. So I went ahead and got the chloramine system on top of the regular RO system here. So there's no doubt about it. The water that comes out of this is going to be 100% perfect for brewing. Basically the water is gonna go through these filters here and uh, some of that water is going to be purified by the time that a good portion of it reaches the final stage. That, what that RO membrane does is it separates out pure water basically from uh, the rest of the water. It leaves a lot of solids behind. However, not all of the water that goes through an RO system is completely purified. So you're gonna have a stream of wastewater and you're gonna have a stream of RO water that comes out of the other side of this thing. And the ratio of wastewater to RO water can vary. People will typically use that wastewater um, on their gardens, on their plants, or you can use it to save it uh, for cleaning if you wanna be a little bit more conscious about it. Um, and there's plenty of good options for that. I'm really excited to get this thing going, so let's go ahead and get this installed. 
So I started out by mounting a piece of wood to an existing piece of the basement right now. This is where I actually run all of my electrical. And um, the RO system is pretty simple to hang. You just have two mounting holes in the back of it. So I marked out where those screws are gonna go and then I installed two screws into the fixture in order to actually hang the RO system. Once the system was actually installed, it was pretty secure at this point. Next, I had to actually install the carbon block filter, which was the third stage of the RO system. So I just went ahead and did that really quickly by inserting the filter and then screwing the filter housing back onto the RO system itself. Next, I started to install the hoses. So here I am installing the input water hose. So this is what your source water is gonna be going into. And then here I'm installing the output wastewater hose. These are simple push fittings, so they're actually really easy to use. So I now have the uh, entire RO system here set up uh, for a flush, an initial flush. I don't have the RO membrane put in yet, uh, but we have to do an initial flush first. And I did have to swap a few things here. So I swapped the blue and the white tubing just due to length concerns. So right now, the way this is set up, I have the white tubing as my input water. Normally that's the blue tubing. The yellow tubing is the wastewater, which I have routed out going out the window here. And then the blue tubing here is my actual purified RO water. Normally that would be the white tubing. For this initial flush, that blue tubing is going directly into this bucket. And I have the white line here hooked up to my uh, water supply for my washing machine, which just happens to be the same hose fitting and the same line. So we'll get this thing flushing and started here in a second. So here I'm showing the actual flush of the RO system first. Uh, so here, it's just basically flushing water through each individual filter stage. Uh, so first going through the sediment filter, followed by the chlorine and chloramine stage, followed by the final carbon block filter. The purpose of this flush is basically to just get rid of any initial solids that are still left over in those filters and just, you know, actually saturate them and get them ready to do their job. Um, there's actually no RO membrane in the RO membrane housing at this time either so all you're doing is just pushing water through the system that initial flush should run for about 10 to 20 minutes overall So the next step is to install the RO membrane itself, which is contained in this housing, which you see me removing from the top of the unit there. When you open up the housing, just be careful to uh, make sure your O-rings don't fall out. Those are very important for proper functioning of the system. Next, I'm uh, unpackaging the RO membrane here. So this is what's gonna go into that tube. You're gonna make sure you install it in a very specific orientation. The double O-rings go facing down into the tube and uh, just make sure it's securely seated before screwing the lid back on. Again, make sure those O-rings are set properly. So the next step here is to install the TDS meter or total dissolved solids meter. Uh, this is an optional upgrade that comes with the system. It does include um, a couple of T's that you have to put into your line. So just grab a box cutter and, and splice those in. Here I installed the uh, output water T and here is the uh, input water T fitting. That's where the total dissolved solids meter uh, probes are going to go. Um, these are really, really easy to install, so just make sure you get one on each in and output water. The meter itself has a nice adhesive backing, so it just sticks right onto the system itself. Uh, and then there's two leads on it. There's one red and one blue. The red lead is going to go into the input water and the blue lead is going to go into the output water. And this way you can actually measure how well your system is overall functioning by the difference in total dissolved solids and parts per million uh, between your input water and your output water. Super, super easy to see. Here you can see I have an 83 parts per million input water versus a 14 parts per million output water TDS. So next I wanted to measure how well the system was working, so I set the flow restrictor valve all the way closed, which means that I was operating at about 60 psi on the RO system. It collected about 3 gallons of RO water in 45 minutes, which equates to exactly 4 gallons per hour, and then contrast that with a wastewater rate of 4.5 gallons per 45 minutes, uh, which is a total of 6 gallons per hour. Um, so that's actually a pretty good ratio overall. 
This system is very usable as it is with just a simple output hose if you want to pay attention to how fast your uh, your brew system is collecting water. I did this for my most recent brew day, as you can see here, um, and it works really, really well. Uh, just, you know, you can heat up the water as it's actually collecting, which is really nice for saving time. And then of course, you know, dissolving your water salts in. So there's one more upgrade that uh, really helps in terms of a brewery perspective, and that is an automatic shutoff valve, which you see here, which is triggered by a float valve, just similar like a toilet bowl would have. Um, so this float valve, if you have it set up like here, with the float valve pointing towards the center of the kettle, automatically shuts off the flow of RO water and also restricts the flow of waste water uh, when the system reaches a certain volume. And it's really, really easy to set up and it really prevents you from wasting water or having any sort of overflow or spill. As you can see, it shuts off both the input water, the RO valve there, as well as the output water, which is the wastewater going into the washing machine drain here. It's just very useful because you can set it and forget it and not worry about spills or wasting water. So now we'll go over the system in detail. Here I'm turning on the system with my uh, washing machine input water that's running input water through that white tube into the system itself, uh, going through all three filters with a TDS of about 79 parts per million. That's operating the system at about 60 PSI with the flow restrictor valve all the way closed. Um, now when I switch my TDS meter over to the output water, you see a very pleasant seven parts per million overall of total dissolved solids. That's pretty awesome. Um, that wastewater is going through the yellow tube into my washing machine drain here, as you can see, uh, so I don't have any flooding in the basement. And then my overall uh, RO output water is just going through this blue tube through the float valve uh, into my actual system. I don't recommend actually setting up the float valve like this because the friction against the kettle can keep it from actually triggering. Set it up like I showed you before, but overall it's a proof of concept and it works really well. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful and learned something. Hopefully it was a good thing for you to watch and let me know if you end up getting your own RO system or you have something like this. What's your experience been? And especially, do you have any tips for me and anyone else who might be watching this video? Let us know down in the comments. Please go ahead, hit that like button before you leave and subscribe as well if you haven't already. I need all of the support I can get because YouTube's algorithm is acting really, really funny right now in that uh, a lot of my videos are getting a little bit of initial traction and then they are immediately dying. So I would really just appreciate it if you like and share the video. That's the biggest thing you can do to help me out. It means a lot if you are doing that. If you want to support the channel, there's a number of great ways to do so. Please consider picking up a t-shirt like this one. You can find that in the merchandise store. There's also a Patreon and my Patreon supporters are making big moves for this channel, helping me to do things like buy that RO system. So I really do appreciate your support in all of that. So a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Also, please check out the super thanks button, the channel membership options. All of those things are there if you want to uh, participate that way. It's all greatly appreciated. I also have an Amazon store where you can find all the brewing and uh, filming equipment that I thoroughly recommend that's on Amazon. So do check that out if you've got some, uh, some time and some curiosity. If you want to follow me in more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer. So please do check those links out as well if you want some more frequent content between uploads and you get to see what's going to come to the channel in the future. Anyway, guys, if you're still here, I really do appreciate you watching all the way to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And again, it helps make my videos a bit more visible to the rest of YouTube. So you have my thanks. And so, yeah, this one goes out to you. Until the next one, cheers.